So squamous carcinoma does behave a little differently than non-squamous. Squamous is a very predictable uh, spread from the primary tumor to the lymph nodes to elsewhere. Um, the common areas of spread of squamous, adrenal gland, liver, bone, the brain can be involved uh, like it was in this case. However, that's, that's unusual. Probably less than 10% of initially diagnosed patients with squamous w will have the presence of brain metastases. Um, that's, that's probably half the rate that we see in non-squamous, non-small cell. Non-squamous, which is pr principally adenocarcinoma, um, you don't necessarily have this predictable spread from the primary tumor to the lymph nodes to elsewhere. Uh, you can have a primary tumor, no nodal involvement, and have brain metastases. That's, that's a common presentation of non-squamous, particularly adenocarcinoma. That would be highly unusual in squamous carcinoma. Squamous tends to be a more local regional disease in the chest before it metastasizes. The patient at the time of diagnosis was found to have two lesions. Um, so that's a limited number of lesions. They were relatively small um, and they were relatively asymptomatic. So I think in this day and age, we would like to avoid whole brain radiotherapy because of its potential toxicity. Uh, so I think actually this patient would have been uh, a very good candidate for stereotactic radiosurgery because of the limited number of metastatic sites, their relatively small size, and uh, the fact that he was asymptomatic. So the role of molecular testing in patients with squamous histology stage four disease, I would say is in evolution. Um, most current guidelines do not recommend routine testing in squamous. There are a couple of exceptions in squamous where I would do the typical molecular testing that we do in the non-squamous population uh, where there's doubt about the exact histologic diagnosis, um, where there's maybe mixed histologies. Occasionally you see squamous histology in a patient who doesn't have a smoking history or has a very remote light smoking history, and I would test those patients. In the patient that is a heavy smoker, maybe continuing to smoke with squamous, I think guidelines would say um, the likelihood that you're going to find anything is so remotely low that uh, routine molecular testing is not recommended in that group of patients. There's one exception, um, uh, uh, I, I don't know if I would call this molecular testing, but pdl one testing is important, and we know in this case the patient was pdl one negative. There are several studies ongoing that are looking at uh, potential targets in squamous. We, we don't see the typical targets uh, in squamous like we see in non-squamous. So for instance, uh, where we have FDA-approved therapies for EGFR mutation positive patients, BRAF mutation positive, ALK and ROS1 translocated patients, we all have FDA-approved targeted therapies for those patients. Those molecular abnormalities are very uncommon to exceptionally rare in squamous patients. So uh, there may be other targets that may be uh, of importance. However, we're still waiting for a proof of concept, so to speak. So the role of targeted therapy in squamous plays a much less of a role than it does in non-squamous.